This is episode 333 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we're going to talk about how to believe in your possibility. And it is a skill set, and a skill set is learned and acquired by practicing. Ready? Let's do this. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show, the only podcast that teaches you how to reshape your mind not your body, to make your life better, bigger, and bolder, your undieted life. I'm your host, Stephanie Dodier, reformed dieter, nutritionist, and coach. You ready? Let's do this. Welcome back, my dear sisters. I am very inspired by today's topic, how to believe new things. And the reason why I'm very inspired by this topic is because this is what I believe will impact diet culture in the long term the most. I have spoken about the inability that we have to take down a multi-billion dollar industry, which is what diet culture is, right? It's the weight loss industry. I think it's $61 billion in the U.S. alone in 2019. Some crazy number. This is an industry and a monster in itself. The way for us to dismantle diet culture, or for that matter, to dismantle any system of oppression that is affecting us, is not by targeting the system itself, but it's by us reclaiming back our power. And the way to claim back our power is to believe in our possibility, to believe that it's possible for us to have this new thing in our life. Now, when I talk about the new thing, that can be anything. And that's very individual to each one of us. I'll take a global example here that many of us are working on, which is to create confidence in ourselves, in our body, coming out of that culture. The new thing being the confidence in our body and in ourselves. The first step in creating that confidence is believing that it's possible for you to be a confident woman without having to change your body, that it's possible for you to be confident as you are today. That's what I call the possibility, that it's possible for you to have the thing, even though right now it is not present in your life. That's the first step. I did a short video, if you're following me on Instagram, I did a short video this summer of me being at the beach in a bikini, and I was reflecting on how I got here. And after, I think it was 45 minutes of me like laying in the sun, tanning up, I realized that the very first step was that I was willing to believe years ago that it's possible for me to be confident without having to lose weight. If I had not done that, if I had not worked on being willing to be willing to believe that it was possible for me, I would not be a confident fat woman today. So that is the first step, to believe that it's possible for you to have this new thing. The truth is, as human, we are limitless. We are born enough. We are born innately worthy. We are born with possibility. What prevents us from having all the things we want to have is our thoughts and our belief. And this is what we learn from our environment, from people around us, from our families of origin, from the various system of oppression, from social conditioning. We have it at the base. We are a limitless individual. But then thoughts get added into our brain, socialized, our brain gets socialized to our limitation. 
And unless we intentionally manage our mind, we intentionally go into our brain and say, no, 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 no. As of today, I am no longer going to think these limiting thoughts about myself. I'm going to put my resources, my effort into believing that this is possible for me. The fact is, you know how to believe. You know how to believe in things that are currently the reality in your life. So I don't like when we say believing is a skill set we have to learn because I think that is untrue. We know how to believe. Like for me, for years, I believed that fat, being fat as a person, meant that I was lazy. I believe, I got myself to believe that fat was unhealthy. I wasn't born believing that fat is unhealthy. I was socialized and then it was reinforced in my family of origin and in my friends at school, in the education system, that fat was unhealthy. I learned to believe that fat was unhealthy, that fat bodies are ugly, that fat being meant that I was lazy. I learned to believe that. I have the skill set of believing and I've had that skill set for decades. The skill set I didn't possess was the skill set of believing things that weren't in my reality right now, that wasn't being reinforced by all the systems around me. That's the skill set I needed to develop in order to create the life that I currently have, the life that I wanted to have. So I guess the first place we want to start is to know what we want to believe that currently is not in our existence. And that's the first step, I believe, of living intentionally, is taking a stop, taking a moment, sitting down with ourselves and reflecting about what we want to create in our life. And again, when we are in an energy of survival, when we are in an energy who only believes that we are not good enough, that life is dangerous if we don't do this and this and this and that, we're going to have more suffering. And we are in that energy of like always trying to fix ourselves. There's no space. There's no time. There is no energy available for thinking about what we want to create in our life. So if that's the stage you are in, that's the first place. Don't listen to the rest of the podcast. Stop right here. And the first thing you want to do is to sit with yourself as long as you can, that it's tolerable for you to be in silence with yourself and ask yourself, what is it that I want in my life? What is it that I want in my life that is from a place of love? Often when we begin our journey in discovering what we want, we want things that are going to appease our suffering. And our suffering is coming from the fact that we're living from a place of fear and compliance to all the ideals and the standards around us. So I guess the first place is it to discover what is it that I want in my life from a place of love without fixing myself, without fixing anything. What is it that I want to create new in my life? That's the first step. For many of us, that's a stretch. That's a stretch because we've never, quote, allowed ourselves <laughs> to think what we could have in our life because we've been so focused on fixing, 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 and preventing, and fixing, and preventing, and fixing, and preventing. We've never been in this energy of creation, so it takes practice. Be compassionate with yourself. That's why I like long workshop. We just did one on the Enough Masterclass where we spent two, three hour session creating this energy as a group 
to be in the space of asking ourselves these questions about what we want to create in our life. So give yourself time and compassion. And then the second step or the second skill set you're going to need to call upon you is what I called the concept of self-authorization. Again, for us as women, we have, up until the moment we start this journey of being intentional with our life, have been living from a place of compliance, complying to the standard that we have been laid upon, that it is either from what a woman should be, what a body should look like, how we should be as a mother, how we should be as a professional person, like we have been living off these standards that have been handing out to us. And working outside of those standards is very uncomfortable or wanting things that are not in the standard pool of compliance is it's unimaginable for us. So we have to authorize ourselves to think outside the box, to think outside of the norm, right? When I coach professional, one of the barrier that they all have to get over is making money because they have been socialized as healers, as coaches and health professional that they should be giving away their time to help the world. When we're healing other people, we shouldn't be making money off of helping other people. That's how they've been conditioned. Perhaps as I'm saying that, many of you are like, wow, that's what I'm thinking too. Like people who are healing other people shouldn't be making money. That's a conditioning from society. I'm not going to get into the why and the who, but it has to do with patriarchy because most healers are female and making money for women is something that patriarchy doesn't encourage because that puts us in, this, in a place of power in an economy system where money is power. I'm diverging here. I'm going to go back to believing new things. I could talk about social social conditioning for hours, but we're going to come back to believing new things. So to make money for coaches is something that they have to allow themselves, they have to authorize themselves to believe. What is it for you? For women, one of the authorization we have to give ourselves is accepting our body with the fatness, with the rolls on the bellies, with the wrinkles as you get older, with the gray hair, that is outside the conditioning. We have to authorize ourselves to want those things. And then we go into the building the skill set of believing new things. When we think about believing something that is currently not in our reality, it means accepting something that isn't true for us right now. What is true for us, for an example, if I go back to women and body, what is true for us right now is the belief we have acquired that fat is bad and all the variation of that. <laughs> and now we have to onboard the belief that my body is a tool for me to experience my life, right? That's typically the belief that I work with people with. My body is a tool for me to experience my life. That's something that isn't true right now in women's life. They don't use their body to experience life. They use their body for their self-worth. So they have to onboard a new truth. And here's the reality, and here's where many people give up in believing new things. It's hard if people are selling you the concept that believing new things is easy, that's other bullshit. Believing things that are currently not your reality is hard because you have zero evidence that it's true. Now, one of the things you can anchor yourself in is believing that it's true for other people. We call that a ladder of belief, right? So pick someone around you for whom the belief, an example of 
your body is a tool to experience life, that fatness is neutral, if you can't believe it for yourself, anchor yourself in someone else living in that belief. So please borrow my belief, <laughs> right? That's why it's important to have an inspirational figure that lives in the context of the new things you want to believe. That's what I do also for the professional that I work with is I am totally excited about making money as a coach because I know the value that I give to my client and the profound level of transformation they get from working with me and how much better, more enjoyable their life is because they are paying me to work with me. Like I've done this belief work years ago and now I'm an example of the belief that making money as a coach or as a healer is totally neutral. It's the same level as, let's think of a lawyer. A lawyer makes money to defend people in court and society thinks it's okay. I live in the space that making money as a healer is totally okay and accepted and expected. So professional who work with me can borrow that belief. The other piece in the process of believing new things is recognizing that a belief is simply a thought that you've been thinking for a long time. It's not a fact. We have to not expect it to be a fact, right? I did a podcast recently on the difference between a fact and a thought. As we do the belief work of believing new things, we have to sit in the awareness that we're building a belief and it's simply a thought. A belief is a thought we've been thinking for a long period of time. And our brain has come to default the automatic thinking to be this thought, right? So we'll go back to the example of the body. Your brain, my brain years ago, for about 20 plus five years had the default thought when looking at my body that fat is bad. It was not a fact that fatness was bad. It was the thought my brain was conditioned to think on automation when looking at my body. The work, the belief work of believing a new thing is that process of making a new thought a default thinking in the context of this new circumstance. So in the context of the body, your work, quote unquote, is to make my body as a tool to experience life the default thinking of your brain when looking at your body. That's what I mean by it's hard. It's not physically hard to believe new things. It's not like you have to go on the treadmill for 30 minutes a day, wink, wink, diet culture. <laughs> it's hard because the effort is to redirect your brain for months to this new thought. That's the quote unquote work. That's the effort, that's the heart. The heart is every time you see yourself in the mirror or you have the thought, fat is bad, is to whoop, redirect your thought to no. My body is a tool to experience life. It doesn't mean anything about me. That's the work. And to do that, while having no proof in your life that it's true. Recognizing that for the last number of decades, that has not been true. That's why it's important to have a leader that you can anchor yourself into and say, okay, my coach who's helping me with this believes that and lives her life in that direction. So it's possible for me too. There's what we call stages of belief. There's three stages of belief that we encounter as we coached through a new belief. The stage of impossibility. This is when we start, right? Or even before we even start believing a new thing. So if I was to dial back the clock for me 25 years ago, or even, no, even let's be gentler, 10 years ago, 
when I was 37 years old. If I was to go back in that version of me, it was impossible for me to believe that one day I could be at my highest weight and be the most confident, happy version of myself. It was impossible. And that kept this impossibility till about hmm, six years ago when I started to work on my body image with my coach. And that first stage, I hired a coach that lived in the fat body. And that first stage was to think it's possible for her to be confident, happy, and contempt in her life and her fat body. And I had to really for, I think I did that for close to two months, look at her and how she was living her life, what she was saying, what she was showing the world, that it was possible, truly possible for her. My brain took a couple months to accept that. Then the next stage was the stage of possibility. It's possible for me to become someone who believes that her self-worth is not attached to her body. It's possible for me to believe that my body is a tool for me to experience life. That's the stage of possibility where you're like, you're trying to convince your brain that it's possible for you in the future to be this person, this version of you, this possibility is a reality in your life. And then the third stage is the possibility is when you have accepted, your brain has accepted that you're becoming someone who believes blah, 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 blah. I am becoming someone who uses her body to experience life. That's the last stage, the stage of probability. It's 100% going to happen. I don't know when, it may take months again, but I will be this version of myself. Now, here's a caveat to believing in new things that, again, is not spoken of in most social circle when we're talking about creating new belief is that it's going to be hard and your brain's going to resist this. Your brain is going to resist believing in this new thing because for your human brain, that's danger. Your human brain wants you to stay who you are. That's why I think there's a statistic that say 91% of women think that the only possibility for them is to hate their body. Like the percentage of women who are willing to accept their body is growing, but it's still an infinite small percentage of women. Why? Because when they attempt to accept their body, it's their brain resists it, they say it's hard, and then they quit. Because we expect it to be easy. But it's not true. The brain is supposed to resist believing in new things. Otherwise, we would be a different planet. If every human embraced the possibility they have in themselves in believing in anything, about themselves. I mean, we would live in a completely different world. It's a gift you give to yourself. I am telling you, to whoever is listening to this, like from the bottom of my heart, from every bone in my body and every strand of DNA I have, acquire that skill set. Learn how to believe in new things. This is the most powerful human skill set you can have you're going to change your life and by default, you're going to change the life of people around you by being an example of what is possible when we learn to believe into new things. Which, by the way, the skill set of believing in new things is the skill set of learning and being in a managed mind. If I can recap the skill set of believing new things is the skill set of managing your mind, of redirecting your brain, your mind to think what you want to think. Not the default narrative, not the conditioning narrative. What you want to think 
is what your brain thinks. That's the skill set of believing new things. So I'm going to close this off on this podcast here, and I'm going to close this off with one of my favorite quote that I use over and over again. Believing is a choice. You either believe in your limitation or you believe in your possibility. Believing in your limitation is what currently the conditioning in your mind is present. Whatever you've been exposed to in your life, that's your limitation. Society conditioning is to limit you. If you want to live in a world of possibility, you got to think outside the box, authorize yourself to think things that are very uncomfortable. But it's a choice. Believing in your possibility costs nothing. Right now, you have enough on this podcast if you've taken a ton of note and you have the self-determination to go out and build a skill set of possibility. I've given you enough. If you have money to invest, that's when you hire me as your coach. I'm going to repeat the same thing to you, give you more details, and then coach you to believe that thing, whatever you want to believe. But in itself, believing in your possibility is completely free. It's a choice of where you direct your mind. I love you, and I'll see you on the next podcast. If you are loving what you're learning on the podcast, you have to come and check out Undiet Your Life. This is where we get to hang out together, where you get the individual help applying the concept thought on the podcast while learning new coaching tool that will make your life even more amazing. It's also where you get to apply the learning to think better, eat better, and feel better and create your undieted life, your better, bigger, and bolder life. Go to stephaniedoze.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join us inside of Undiet Your Life, and I'll see you on the other side.